This is May June 2023, paper 2, variant 2. Question 1. For this question, uh, it's about the, uh, the bonding uh, in a solid. So we have magnesium, phosphorus, uh, NaCl, and sulfur. And the bonding uh, within the solid, uh, they are different. In magnesium, we know that uh, it's just a metallic bond. Phosphorus, it has two types. Between the molecule is IDID. Within the molecule is covalent. Sodium chloride, it has one type, ionic bonding. Sulfur, similar to the phosphorus. Uh, between the molecule is the IDID. Within the molecule is covalent. Okay, but when it's about melting point or boiling point, um, normally it will refer to the intermolecular force for those molecules like phosphorus and sulfur. Okay, so now A part one, state the type of bond present in magnesium and in sodium chloride. So this is quite easy because it's just involve one type. For the magnesium, we know that it has metallic, sodium chloride is ionic. Okay, this one is understandable. For part two, explain the difference in the melting point of magnesium and the sodium chloride. Okay, so the melting point between these two solids uh, is uh, basically about the bonding. So which bonding is stronger? From the melting point, we know that the ionic bond in sodium chloride is stronger than the metallic bond in magnesium. That's the reason why uh, it has different melting point because the stronger bonding, right, in the uh, this uh, sodium chloride uh, than magnesium. Okay, part three. Explain the difference in the melting point of phosphorus and sulfur in terms of structure and bonding. So you have to understand the question what they want. They want you to mention the structure, whether it's a simple or giant molecular and the bonding they have for the melting points only. Okay, so now if we compare the sulfur and the phosphorus, we know that they are both simple molecular structure and sulfur is has higher melting point than the phosphorus so we need to know that okay the size now is the main factors that affects the melting point sulfur is sa means eight sulfur atom in one molecule Phosphorus is P4, four phosphorus atom in one molecule. That's why sulfur is larger than the phosphorus. And sulfur is, has a stronger IDID than the phosphorus. Okay, that's why you have to explain like this. Okay, molecules of sulfur, okay, they have more electrons than the molecules of phosphorus because Sulfur is has eight atom, phosphorus is has four atoms in the molecule only. Okay, so more electrons must be there. More electron means size larger. Size larger, the intermolecular force okay, is stronger. So S A, okay, this two is a larger molecule. Between the molecule, it has a stronger I D I D forces. Okay, that's why we say that sulfur has a stronger instantaneous dipole, induced dipole forces, short form we call IDID. Okay, B part 1, define electronegativity. So this one is uh, quite easy. Power of an atom to attract electron to itself. Actually, it's referred to, for example, we have HCl. We say that chlorine is, has more electronegativity. Why? Because 
is able to pull electron or withdraw electron to itself through the bonding, through this bonding, the covalent bonding. Okay, so therefore, okay, we know that the electrons will move towards the chlorine, right? So means it's the power of an atom attract electrons to itself through the covalent bond. Okay, part two. Explain why electronegativity increases across the period. So across the period, we know that the numbers of inner shell for all the elements is actually same. So the inner shell same means the shielding effect is almost constant. So this one you must understand. A cross period means inner shell is the same. Okay. Another factor is the proton number. So we know, know that proton number across period increases. And inner shell is the same. Uh, this is the two main factors. Uh, okay. So across a period there is an increase in nuclear charge means proton number. And there are similar shielding effect or constant shielding effect because of the same numbers of inner shell okay, among the elements. Therefore, there is an increase in the nuclear attraction. So the nucleus can attract the bonding electron stronger. It's actually the bonding electron, right? Because it's the electronegativity. Right, I hope you understand this. Okay, part three. Name the strongest IMF, the intermolecular forces. Intermolecular force, okay, is uh, in the syllabus is actually Van der Waals forces. Under Van der Waals forces, uh, it has the IDID, PDPD, and hydrogen bond. So the strongest intermolecular force that exists between ammonia molecules confirm is hydrogen bond right this is the strongest then it can it can form with other molecules part four draw a diagram to show the formation of strongest intermolecular force between these the two ammonia molecules it's very easy you just draw the two molecules Make sure lone pair on nitrogen is there and you must put the dotted lines okay, between the hydrogen that bonded to the nitrogen okay, and the lone pair. So means this is the hydrogen bonds that form. So you must have you must draw the lone pair on nitrogen and this dotted line with the H which bonded to N, another N. Another very important thing is you must show the dipoles, at least three dipoles. Okay, partial negative on nitrogen, partial positive okay, on hydrogen, partial negative on nitrogen, at least three dipoles. Then you can get two marks. Okay, part five. The melting point of ice and ammonia, okay, they are shown in this table 1.2. Uh, melting point for ice. Okay, it's higher than the ammonia. So, suggest two reasons for the difference in the melting point of ice and the ammonia. Okay, so we know that the oxygen inside the ice is H2O. Everyone know. Ammonia is NH3. So, if uh, because both solid they will form hydrogen bond. So the difference that uh, make the uh, melting point of ice higher okay, is because oxygen, because it's H2O, right? So the hydrogen is bonded to oxygen and this oxygen is more electronegative. More electronegative means it will withdraw electrons to itself greater. 
and therefore okay the bonding it will be more polar later more polar then it will has a stronger uh, attractions between molecules uh, that's the reason why eh? the first reason is because oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen means the nitrogen uh, will withdraw electron but it's not as great as oxygen and the bonding is not as polar as the OH bond okay second is because the numbers of hydrogen bonds uh, per water molecule is more than the ammonia so water molecules the h2o right h2o it can by average so it can form two hydrogen bond maximum can form four right and ammonia is uh, okay one by average so it can form one so that's why there are more hydrogen bond form between the water molecules than ammonia so the ratio is uh, two to one two to one huh? you can say four to two or two to one okay as long the ratio is this one okay so that's all for this question one thank you